Hey everybody, my name is Matthew Sambanis. I'm a certified public accountant. My firm is based in Long Island, New York. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss why I'm buying Peloton stock. And just to be very clear, I'm not saying this as a CPA, I'm not saying this as an investment advisor, which I'm not. Uh, for all intents and purposes of this video, I'm just a random dude on YouTube who believes Peloton stock will go up substantially from here and therefore I'm buying it. And I also want to predicate that with there's also a possibility that it could go down by half. It could actually go down to zero. And the only money that I intend on investing in Peloton stock is money that I'm willing to lose. So let's get rocking and rolling. All right. Uh, to give you a bit of a background history on it, Peloton stock is trading down nearly 90% below its IPO price. Um, it went public at about... $30, <laughs> right, uh, a few years ago in 2019, and it went up 477% to $167 during the height of the pandemic. Remember the pandemic, right? <laughs> Everybody was uh, pent up at home, couldn't get out, all that wonderful stuff, and now it's $4. So I just want to be very clear. This reminds me of Carvana, which, you know, about a year or two ago went down to four bucks. And I said to myself, you know, I really need to buy options on this. I need to go long and load up. And of course I didn't. And lo and behold, within less than a year, I believe it was up to 40 bucks. So I do plan on basically buying, you know, uh, what I feel comfortable with losing. Uh, everybody's dollar amount for that is different, whether it's a couple hundred or a couple thousand or a couple 10,000, that's up to you and that's up to your discretion. Uh, to continue on with the background story, most of the growth uh, came on by the pandemic, which people couldn't go to the gym. They couldn't, you know, go to the um, local YMCA clubs and other places of that nature. And basically, Peloton blew up, right? And now COVID is over. Peloton is decrease in their revenues and their losses have actually decreased as well but that's because <laughs> their revenues have been decreasing and also because of thousands of layoffs um, which everybody's laying off people now and basically the other issue now is financing is actually pretty high so you know interest rates are high that's you know these high growth stocks got plumbled because of that as well and in case you don't know what Peloton does, they sell high-end bicycles, exercise bikes, and treadmills that connects their users to stream and video classes. And they also have an app where you can take other, you know, exercise classes or things of that nature. Very simple. I mean, it's a glorified at-home gym that you pay a monthly subscription to. And that business model worked great. Uh, but as, as the gyms reopened and cheaper competitors entered the market, um, it was just a downfall from there. So also in 2021, they had to recall their treadmills. That also took a lot of uh, wind out of their sail, if you'd like to call it that. And the following year, the founder and CEO, John Foley, stepped down and was succeeded by Barry McCarthy. If you don't know who Barry McCarthy is, he's the former CFO of Netflix and of Spotify. Um, I think both of those companies have, I mean, especially Netflix, they've done wonderful things. I think this guy's a very smart man. I think this guy has a lot of skin in the game and a lot on his ego to turn this company around. So uh, part of investing is you're investing in the people. So if you believe that the former CFO of Spotify and Netflix, who's probably a very wealthy guy, uh, can turn this thing around, then, you know, bet a couple bucks with him. Under McCarthy, Peloton aggressively cut costs. They laid off more employees. They outsourced their production to a Taiwanese manufacturer and started to sell products on Amazon. And the reason, which was very smart, to sell on Amazon was to reduce its logistics costs and expand its reach beyond the first-party website and showrooms. That's all great stuff. Furthermore, it reduced its equipment prices while raising its subscription fees, which is very smart, something I would have done. And they partnered with Lululemons to Lululemon <laughs> to sell the latter's athletic apparel and exclusively provide its digital fitness content. 
So McCarthy's main turnaround strategy is to expand into the higher margin subscription business to curb its dependence on lower margin sales of bikes and treadmills and other equipments. And not for nothing, I'm not saying to do this, but if you could give a treadmill away but collect revenue for three, four, five, ten years that more than pays for that treadmill, it's worth doing it. Um, in the latest quarter, which was about $750 million in revenues, Peloton generated 57% of its revenue from subscriptions and the remaining 43% from fitness products. At the end of the day, listen, this company, I believe, has the potential to be very viable. You know, they're doing about $3 billion a year in revenue. That's also their current market cap, $3 billion. So mano y mano, you're paying a dollar for dollar for sales. By the way, if you like economics, making money, finance, uh, the stock market, things of that nature, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to me. It gives me motivation to keep on keeping on. And uh, if you want me to speak or review or analyze any stock, uh, just leave a comment below and I will definitely get to it. So anyway, Peloton's sluggish, uh, sluggish subscription growth in the first half of fiscal 2024 suggested the company was saturated in a niche market. It ended the second quarter with just 6.4 million members, representing a 4% drop earlier from a year earlier, while its total number of paid app subscribers declined to 6%. So we don't want to see a decline in members, but at the end of the day, they have over you know 6.4 million members, and um, they have over 718,000 paid app subscribers. So again, they have the numbers, they have the potential, they have the ability. I think they just need a strategic, good turnaround, and they have a fantastic heartbeat to really make that company grow. And I'm also going to give you some of my own ideas as well as to what I also think they could do to improve. Anyway, Peloton expects its revenue to decline to about 3 decline 3% to about 2.7 billion as it struggles to scale up its business and retain its subscribers. It also expects its streamlining efforts and the steady growth of its subscription business to boost its gross margin from 33 in fiscal 2023 to 44% in fiscal 2024. So I think that's great. Um, I don't think the decrease in revenue is great, but again, they have the base and they have the ability to raise rates, to bring on new customers, to expand into other categories, to make more money and have more residual revenue. It ended the last quarter with $738 million in unrestricted cash and cash equivalents, as well as a $400 million in revolving credit facility. So it probably is not going to go bankrupt in the next three years. Um, and to put that in proper perspective, with the enterprise value market cap, meaning about $3 billion, it's really dirt cheap when you compare it to this year's sales. And... All it needs is a little bit of good news to get the stock rocking and rolling. Also, I want to point out that the calls, the options on this thing going out to January of 2025 are dirt cheap. Um, stock's $4. I'm buying it. The options, I'm buying it. I'll probably buy three-month, six-month, and 12-month calls. If you want to get really risky, you could do monthly calls. Again, this stock is probably primed to be a, a takeover candidate by Apple. Google, who bought Fitbit. I mean, I'm going to actually, we're not done, by the way. I have more content to cover here. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of other good stuff that could happen. So, anyway. <laughs> um, I just want to emphasize again this the investment here that has a lot of potential but it also has a lot of potential to go wrong so it, don't invest anything that you can't afford to lose i also want to point out by the way i speak freely i do these in one take so if i stutter or stammer it's me not speaking naturally reading off my bullet points so please bear with me okay so anyway in case we missed it before peloton manufactures interactive fitness equipment like exercise bikes treadmills and rowing machines um at the end of the day, its means is really selling to consumers, uh, you know, exercise sessions and app-based workouts. To get to the point, I guess really what I want to cut on is 
they're a market leader. Peloton, what other treadmill maker do you know that's out there? What other rowing machine do you know that's out there? What other bicycle maker do you know that's out there that does what Peloton does? Exactly. <laughs> so what price does that deserve? Right? What does that deserve? Does that warrant a billion dollars? Does that wor- warrant $2 billion? Does that warrant, you know, how about the company has $1.1 billion worth of cash and inventory on its books plus another 140 million in receivables that alone is 1.5 billion which is about half their market cap um granted they have debts so the liquidation is not less than zero but again what do you want to ascribe to that so to me i feel like that this is a great bet i feel like it's a good risky bet i would give it a year to play out you know, if you can't stomach losing half your money or all of your money, don't do it. And, you know, some other companies that got bought out that nobody thought would get bought out. Um, Alphabet acquired then Struggle and Fit back, Fitbit back in 2001. The Wonder Company bought Milkit brand Blue Apron. Uh, granted, you know, at one point, Blue Apron was worth over $3 billion. They paid a $100 million for it. You can't make these numbers up. You can't make this stuff up. Um, if you have faith in the company and their turnaround, then that's what I would do. You know, I would go for it. And by the way, if I were uh, Peloton, what else would I do? I would probably look to sell the gyms, right? Very, very simple. I would also look to lower the sale price of the equipment, which is what they're doing, offer financing, which I'm sure they're doing. I would also copy Netflix and all these other companies with tier pricing, and I would set up one free with ads as well and become an advertising company. Um, also I heard that they lock the machines. You have to have a subscription to use them after you spend a thousand or $6,000. That's just absolutely deplorable and disgusting. Um, which I mentioned before, they also partnered with Lululemon. They also partnered with TikTok. They're offering through Amazon, which is great. If they were really smart, in my opinion, they would offer through Costco. Um, also, you know, marketing with other influencers and, you know, I would also charge by the class, you know, maybe just make it a dollar a class, you know, so you have plenty of options there. If you watched this long, please like, comment and subscribe. If I missed anything, please point it out. And if you're going for a wild ride with this, like I am, let me know and have a great rest of the day. Thanks.